this sign is placed up in spring for this elderly couple. Is it in front of their home? Yes. Okay. Yes. And this cheek is crescent and then what? Why are you pulling crescent? Crescent. 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 Cr
recommendations, we need to say that the Committee on Disabilities um, has made a recommendation of approving the on-street and off-street handicapped parking space. Spaces. Henshaw Avenue, East Door. Okay. And that way that's, that recommendation is set right to the ordinance. Okay. Um, Michael wanted to know how the vote went. I believe um, all seven members voted in favor, and I don't think you were voted, right? Did I chose vote? not to vote because I hadn't heard that okay. it was Okay. And I figured you guys had a couple of Actually, there's yeah. eight, eight people <laughs> voted because So I'm Fanny Chalfin, um, Milton Street in Florence. So um, let's see, where should I begin? Uh, some of the discussion was about the, the windows that seem to have gotten much larger. The, uh, for example, if I need to be someplace at 9 and it's only 5 minutes away, PBTA still gives themselves, um, in that case, 65 to 75 minutes uh, window pickup. Sometimes people get to appointments earlier than places open. And um, the reasoning was that, well, if you were taking the regular bus route, um, you would also have to you know, negotiate these big windows um, uh, that it's court, not a taxi service. And my argument was um, partly that as disabled um, citizens, the reason we even have the, the paratransit is because some of the, the paramediators that would, would apply um, um, for the regular route don't apply for us. And so if you're blind and you're standing around um, in the morning before it's even light or, or just a, 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 a sighted person or an abled um, person could easily go do some banking at some point or, or do some other errands or run in for a cup of coffee. And that's not as obvious for, for um, those of us who have disabilities. So I felt that that wasn't a fair argument for giving themselves this um, hour plus um, window. Um, and I understand that it's going, it, this, this a, a change that is supposedly going to be taking place uh, is that instead of, so if you say you want to be someplace at nine o'clock and they say, okay, then they'll pick you up at a quarter to eight. Um, 
the new thinking is, okay, so they, you tell them what time you want to um, be picked up, um, and then they give themselves at least an hour um, backwards. So let's say you have to be someplace at nine, and you say, okay, five to nine, which normally would be fine, but of course you're gonna wanna leave yourself a window of um, 10 or so minutes, uh, maybe even 15 just to get in and, and get your bearings. So then they still give themselves the hour backwards. Mm -hmm. So it gives you the, it's sort of like saying to a child, which would you like, peas or carrots? But you're really you know, controlling the, the same variables, only you're giving the riders a, a, mm -hmm. a false perception of having some say in it. And then, not only a false perception of having some say in it, but then, of course, if there's a problem, if you say, you know, five to nine, and you get there five minutes late, well, then th that is your fault, right? So, um, so it, it takes some of the responsibility off of them while keeping the parameters um, exactly the same. So um, I think another thing, um, if I understood correctly, is that um, we're going to move away from having, um, well, th this I have to, I have to see, be careful what I say because I'm not sure if I understood correctly or not. What I think I understood was that um, we're moving toward a system where there'll be, um, you call, you won't necessarily speak to somebody and you'll get called back the night before to tell you what your times are because one of the things that I had um, talked to them about was that, okay, they'll tell you, let's say you want to be someplace at nine, they'll say 820 to 840, which sounds totally reasonable to me anyway. Um, and then they'll call the night before and say a quarter to eight. Yeah. So, so, so they said, well, to avoid that problem, they're not going to give, they're going to move toward a system where they're not giving times anymore, where it's going to be, uh, you'll just find out the night before, which means that you can't even plan ahead because you don't know mm -hmm. if you're being picked up 15 minutes ahead of time or an hour and 15 minutes ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So I, I f you know, and, and um, so I feel like we're, also I think many of you might have noticed that um, now we're down to, you can't make, you can't make call and rides more than five, uh, five days ahead of time. This was supposedly to cut down on uh, no-shows and cancellations. But ironically, um, the first week, there are usually only, according to Nicole when, at the last um, PBTA meeting, there are only 47% um, no-shows and cancellations, whereas the second week, um, oh, excuse me, the, the first week it's 53%, and the second week it's 47 So theoretically, the first week, those first five days, you're more likely to get um, cancellations and no-shows anyway. If anything, you know, the, the record is better with the set two weeks out. Um, so now with the calling five days ahead of time, I tried to call to make my rides this week, and of course, um, um, I, I, got, I got put on hold. I was number six. At number three, I got cut off. I called back. I was number eight. And um, so I think we're, we're moving toward um, perhaps more efficiency in the eyes of PPTA, but less efficiency for the riders. Yeah. Um, and the, there were a few other things that um, uh, I'm trying to think of. The, do you remember what I had said you to you? You can't cancel more than five days in advance either. So for example, um, I was on vacation the last week in December and I wanted to add the first, the Monday, January 7th. And I wanted to be efficient and cancel in advance so that I wouldn't forget. And they're like, no. I, so I called like the Thursday before. They're like, well, you can only cancel five days in advance. So I had to remember all during my vacation week, okay, call the van to cancel the next few rides. Like they wouldn't let me just cancel the whole week, mm -hmm. which there's just no logic to that. Yeah. Um, it's not logical. And it just was like, and I couldn't get them to budge on that or give me any logical reason. So these things are of concern and I'm feeling like it would be good to invite Nicole Rowan back again to meet with us and have a conversation about some of these things. Yeah. Sounds like a good yeah. It sounds like it's a entire mm -hmm. meeting. Thank you, Fanny. Was there anything else? Yeah, there were a few other things, but I, sure. I, those were the things that stick out in my mind. Uh, that also, if you have this five-day window, uh, you're not allowed to make um, reservations Saturday or Sunday um, except for Monday. So that's another inconvenience. Mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, mm -hmm. the other things, I guess, were relatively minor compared to those. Fanny, Patty yeah. wanted to ask you a question. Sorry. Yes. Um, 
So if you were calling and you needed it to be, you had an appointment for 10 o'clock, you would have to call, uh, I mean, you would get picked up before um, 9 o'clock then? You could. You yeah, could. so, so my long. office is literally five minutes from my home. Yeah. But it's happened um, with greater and greater frequency in this, this fall that um, if I am seeing a client, let's say at 3.30, um, then they'll pick me up at 2.15. My colleague uses the office until 3. So what am I supposed to do for those 45 minutes? It, and, and, you know, I can understand themselves getting, if they even said like, okay, if it's 3.30, um, uh, giving themselves uh, 2.50 to, to 3.10, you could still understand it in some way, but to give themselves an hour plus, you know, a large margin for the for the driving time, mm -hmm. that seems like a, a bit excessive to me. And at one time, wasn't it just a window of twenty minutes? Well, it's still a window of twenty minutes. What what I, what I mean by that is like, let's say your appointment time is <coughs> is three. So the 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 twenty minute window still exists for when they might pick you up, but. It can start an hour and 15 minutes ahead of time for a five minute ride. Yeah, right. yeah I, I don't know. I'm always, whenever I call, I always say, um, well, I have to be there at four o'clock and they give me the time. Well, how about if I say you have to be there at 4.15? Right. You know, how about if I say, you know, I mean, I, I, that's one way that I, Kind of tried to do it, just but I but they're actually time. they're not going to allow. I, I've done that too, but they're not going to allow that anymore. I think what Danny's saying is that we think that what they're proposing is that they're going to eliminate call takers, so all those call takers are not going to be employed anymore, and they're going to have a system where you call and you leave a, a message on an automated system saying, oh, "This mm -hmm. is so and so." I need a ride to such and such a place from my home tomorrow morning and I need to be there at nine o'clock. So there'll be no person to negotiate with and then you'll get a call that night. So if you have to be somewhere at nine o'clock and they want to pick you up at your home at 7.30 a.m., you'll have no opportunity to negotiate with right. that. Right. And that, that is going into... That's what I understand. But, but I'd also like to say, Mike, um, that uh, you know we all end up doing that. And then the one out of 10 times where they actually come pick you up, like let's say I, if I had a four o'clock client and I say I need to be there at 4, 10 or 4, 15, usually that works, right? But then the one time that doesn't makes me look unprofessional because then I'm late for my client. Mm -hmm. And the very fact that they can even do that, that, that most of the time if I have a four o'clock appointment and I say 4, 15, let's say, most of the mm -hmm. time the window will be the normal window that you actually want. like. 3.30 to, to 3.50, right? Then why can't they do that window normally when I say four o'clock? Because obviously a driver is available at that time. That's not the problem, right? Yeah, who knows? I don't know. I mean, it is, it, they're really pretty much black hole. When well, you're trying to figure out okay. what's going on. So, so I, I'd like to, um, Invite them, and this actually, do we need to vote on that or no? Okay, no. so um, it, this actually leads me into, it sort of segues into the next agenda item, um, which is discussion on COD meetings in January and February. Um, I've been thinking, I would like to do this in a timely manner because um, we think these changes are going into effect in March. The, uh, mm -hmm. I think that was March 31st. Mm -hmm. March. You're taking all the information and up with something at the okay, so I would like to propose that we hold a February meeting and invite Nicole Rowan to come to that meeting and um, devote that meeting to this topic. And going a little bit further, I'd also like to reopen the conversation about having meetings in January and February. It's my yeah. feeling that we should and that if the weather is bad, we will reschedule or cancel, but that I think 
to the, um, I, I'm a little concerned about going to automated systems. Me too. Uh, the reason being that, um, that, that they're assuming that everybody who's calling the PBTA has the competencies to deal with an automated mm -hmm. system. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, I work with, with uh, uh, students with cognitive delays and that, that those, it's creating an additional barrier for them to actually be able to use the system. Mm -hmm. And that, um, and that this, is a, this is a system that's supposed to be able to accommodate right. if people with disabilities. So thus, you know, why are we narrowing down the the number the, the people that it can serve to uh, meet some, you know, to, because this technology is more cost effective. That um, that that would be my concern. That people are going to be disenfranchised from the service because of that. I totally agree, and I think that is one point that we need to do way up.
study hard to her um, after our last meeting in mm -hmm. December. sounded like that was the plan. Mm -hmm. um, the Maybe it's not been set up yet, the system. Yeah, but regardless, the idea was that um, the, the, it, even if it is still a call taker, the call taker would not give us a time, and we wouldn't know until the night before. And the window would still be just as large. So maybe I can't really say then that, I mean, if we're not sure that it's an automated system, I'll have to think about how to phrase that diplomatically. Okay. But but I think there are still some concerns concerns that need to be addressed regardless. A demonstration would be terrific. Perfect. Okay, that's mm -hmm. thank you. That's what I'll do. Um, all right. So I'll do I have another one. Um, tell me about her. Yes. Did you uh, you told me when I talked with you on the phone how um, Kelly had great concerns, but she told me also about PBTA, mm -hmm. and you said that you were trying to locate somebody to see exactly what's going on. It, so it, that she gave was that there were higher no-shows in the first week than in the second, which is one of the reasons why I find this five-day call, you know, kind of curious, because if you want to improve the, the no-shows and cancellations, then you, you'd want to figure out how to, um, how, to, how to improve that in the first week, not make everything the first week. Second of all, if you get called at um, at seven o'clock at night and you find out that the window is too big, you, you just can't do it. 
that would actually increase the number of, of cancellations. Right. So, so ironically, even though that was the stated reason for that e emphasis in that meeting, it, it seems like what they're doing doesn't go in that direction. Mm -hmm. Well, then, if, if Nicole comes out, if she'd be the perfect candidate because she's the one who presented the proposal to everybody, um, then that would sell for that public hearing or a public meeting. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have several things that I'd like to bring up. Um, just sort of committing on what I've been doing. I've been uh, emailing secretaries from different Massachusetts distillery committees. Um, I'm getting a wealth of information from the different secretaries. I've also been in touch with the Massachusetts Distillery Commission. Uh, this came up Kennedy after we talked this morning. I got an email. I want to let the committee know there's a um, disability expo going on in Boston, September 20th to the 22nd. They asked if you wanted to have a table, but from the information they gave me, I had a table there. I don't really think we do because it's mostly for selling things and we don't have anything to sell. Mm -hmm. But they, it's free to attend it. And they have a wealth of workshops. Yeah. All the workshops are free. Um, yeah. I'm starting to print it out, but I'm out of color in it, so it's printed very well. Who's sponsoring it? The this? Massachusetts Disability Commission, the one that um, um, it's run by the, the state of Massachusetts. It's not the Mass Office on Disabilities. Yes. It is. Mm -hmm. Because we should invite them here. I've already talked yeah, to them. Jeffrey, um, Jeffrey, Jeffrey he, um, Dugan. 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 He's yeah. the one who sent me this information. Right, because he, he, I asked him if he would come here, but we mm -hmm. could set that up here so that everybody in this that end of the state could participate. That's this is the one right in Boston. Here. There's one in every state um, scheduled for 2015. September 20th to the 22nd. It's like a weekend. It's Friday. It's Monday. Yeah, they have one set up in every state of the United States yeah. for 2013. And that's when where the one is in Massachusetts. And uh, he sent it to me. So they got it in the mail and us. Where are we going? Oh. Um, is that on your website? Yes. Can you just email everybody uh, sure. about that?
shops that I make the most energy yeah. from and go yeah. back to Yeah, that's my I would, I would, I would consider it going home. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Yeah. I, I, would, mm -hmm. I do a computer with, um, expos like that, and you get a ton of decoration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, would, I would definitely. It's mm -hmm. way down the road. But yeah, it's it's good. Good. I, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, do you say yeah. I'm not here for anybody now, but I'm just saying. And I also, and I also yeah. want that documented. I like the idea of you trying to get a hold of them to see if they could come and do something mm -hmm. here at the senior center, which could be the Amherst area. And yeah, we have a great call. That would be hilarious. This is, this is his advertising. If he says if you're serving on a commission and would like someone to run one, you should come to one of the regular scheduled meetings. Please feel free to use contact information if that's available. Yeah, because yeah. 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 he already said he would come yeah. here. But thank you for that. Yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, that's all you got to do. Can I just add one thing? Sure. Uh, Ruth had also brought up about, I think it was Ruth or maybe it was Susan, about um, we at one time had a, um, mm -hmm. a, a workshop, I guess, yeah. what you call, where a lot of businesses came in and offered what they would do for employment for disabled. Mm -hmm. And we, we had a table at it. And so I think from this group, there was the idea of doing something like mm -hmm. that or a little bit bigger mm -hmm. um, or more expanded. Mm -hmm. So that, I think we should think about that. Casey and I 
very hard on natural laws. Trying, because at social services and veterans affairs, the stress tell you didn't have any money. Upright didn't have any money. So we looked at those mass general laws, came to me and said, guess what? We should be able to get it. I said, you gotta be kidding. And it was through the parking fines mm -hmm. for handicaps. Mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> Not knowing it, because of the mass general laws and the section AJ and section 22 hurt this committee big time because of what was involved of doing that. That automatically changed it, not a committee on disabilities, but a committee, I mean a commission on disabilities because of the mass general laws. When I went in and saw the mayor on Monday, I had great concerns because of the ordinance on the order that we placed at city council in June 2011, I think it was, right here, upon a recommendation on June 16, 2011 of the Mayor and Finance Committee, which both Eugene and I, Council Casey and I were on. What had happened was I had great concerns of how come professionals in the city didn't pick that up when we first made the original ordinance of changing and going into section 8J and section 22. Nobody picked it up that it was going to change the title of this committee. Right. And it was making a huge movement. It would have been an elected position or an appointed position, um, no counselors, okay, which you really need to have because that's where some of your power is. Absolutely. It was lo she was losing authority money-wise of handling the money, which I had in fact to convince, uh, really, I had great concerns about a whole commission mm -hmm. handling money when it should be the director of the senior center. Mm -hmm. Okay, being on finance for several years, the money part to me is very critical. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. That's where the movement was. And because of the charter change, our attorney, our, our city solicitor, Alan Seawald, when Pat and I first went to see him about the membership to change it, that opened the doors of them because of the charter being approved of looking further into what we have done with the revolving fund that we have of the 5,000, okay, on a year on a yearly basis. And then they found that this was a no-no. Hmm. A no-no for a commission? This was a no-no. For a committee? For a commission that- We were off track because all this time we have, right, gone through the mass general laws, section, what is it, section 8J, section, section 22. Chapter 48. We applied for handicap parking fines, which, which made the big change right there. Okay, which was serious. Nobody was told this. It, if I had known that, I'm sorry, I would not have supported it. And I, Patty, you were there when I said that. She did not know nothing about it. Nobody professionally picked it up. Mm -hmm. The right. big concern with everybody was getting the money. Mm -hmm. Every one of these wanted the money. I wanted the money. Council Casey wanted the money. Mm -hmm. But it changed everything. Mm -hmm. So what do we do now? No, we're fine. Okay. What we are doing, and that's why we're doing this complete mm -hmm. ordinance change. Yeah. And like I said, for three days, I've been on emailing back and forth with the mayor, except for Sunday when the Patriots game came on. <laughs> <laughs> so, You're a loyal patriot. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, anyways, I think we're on the right track. And Patty did thank me because there were some big, important issues that I had involved in. Yeah, there, there were um, a number of... Um, Concerns and, and as um, Councilman Clark said, she really. Found
find truth to that whole ordinance. And the end result with all of what was done um, yeah. on Grove Archer was, you know, now we're going to be in compliance. So, and, and that we will have that revolving account, and it will be, uh, you know, for the commission on um, disability. Right. Okay. So, so I will. It's not going to be the commission. So it's going to be the committee on this. Right. One, this is just the commission. This is the second draft now. recommended 
created by the City Council President. The City's American Disabilities Act ADA coordinator shall be the liaison to the Commission. Terms. The terms of the first members of said Commission shall be for one, two, or three years, and so arranged that the term of one third of the members expires each year, and their successor shall be appointed a term of three years each. Any member of said Commission may, after public hearing, if so requested, be removed for cause by the appointing authority. A vacancy occurring other than by expiration of a term shall be filled for the unexpired term in the same manner as an original appointment. The chairperson and other officers shall be chosen by a majority vote of said commission members. Officers. The commission shall elect a chair and a vice chair from within its ranks and fill such other offices as it may determine. Compensation. Members of said commission shall serve without compensation. Meetings. Said commission shall keep all records of its meetings and actions and shall file an annual report with the city of Northampton and shall have at least 10 meetings annually. So that's the proposal and it's based on Mass General Law. So this would be calling it a commission. Not it would be a commission. That's the official title by the chapter. But would we keep the same structure with the same officers and the same yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Except the only thing appointed. is there can only be nine members. No associate no members. So I think that's something that's going to have to get worked out. Jim? Yeah, um, so just to be so I'm clear from what Marianne has relayed. So you put this, this has been put together in conjunction with the mayor's office and with um, a, attorney Seawall. And so um, based on that and what I, what I, I, I love the duties being laid out like this. I think this is really well done and that, um, that I would approve this going forward. I have a question. Thank you. The only question that I had was um, Marianne, Councilor Bosch, mm -hmm. and um, Ben. They're related. No, no they're not. They're not related. No. Yeah, no. you two are related. No. no. Okay, so she liked she like my dear friend. I thought no. you two were sisters. No. Oh. Oh. Because I was wondering how you would satisfy that. That's the only thing that really stuck out was that immediate, a immediate family had to be on the board, uh, on the board, on the okay. commission as well. Let's say more of an example, Jim and I. We have somebody in his family, uh -huh. okay, who is disabled. Same with my husband, who had a sister who was disabled. Okay. okay. And now they had to be on the commission as well, though. No. No. Okay, I was going to say that. Okay. okay. So that's okay. right. Now, Roy just said to me, well, you know, no, he wouldn't be a voting member. I said, there will not be any associate members. Right. Right. There will only be nine, oh, okay. well, it says here nine members. Okay. Okay. So okay. how that's gonna work out, we don't know because it can only be nine members. Right. Okay. How many members do you have now without me and... Uh, okay, right now, okay, right now the way we're formed is we have nine voting members mm -hmm. and we're down because it's Vicki, uh, Michael, and Barbara. And Barbara, and no, Barbara got moved down to yeah, associate. Exactly. So maybe it's only two up there. And then Roy, Ruth, yeah. Dan are the, uh, and Eleanor are the yeah, associate yeah. members. Yeah. So that's the part that's going to have to get figured out. Mm -hmm. 
then we know he did. Okay. Well, those who didn't may, unfortunately, depending on how much the problems there are, may have to wait until another problem is there. Exactly. And there are people who want to get in. There's not plenty of people. people. Yeah. 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 So that's unfortunately how it goes. So who are we supposed to, are we supposed to make a recommendation? We're supposed to make a recommendation. You can just let me know how you feel, like I'll be talking with the mayor tomorrow, mm -hmm. and um, I'll let him know. Do you guys want to discuss any pros and cons first? What's that? Do you guys want to discuss any pros and cons? Like, it feels like, I, I'm I'm not a member, but it, it just feels like it's not clear yet what the pros and cons might be, what you might be giving up in this relationship. There's a lot involved in this. That's why I wonder if you really want to vote on it without having discussed it maybe, before. Maybe um, take some time to think about this. But how yeah, could you yeah, move yeah. on it? It's very hard with the mayor to change the language on it, and I think it's the right way to go. Question? Yes. What do we do to say? That's a very good point, Penny. Um, we can see how it's going to change. We're obviously, our structure yeah. of members and, not, and voting and non voting members is. It was an alternative, okay, mm -hmm. to say, then take the money back. Take yeah. the money back. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go ahead and disrupt, a committee take the money back because that's what made that problem. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we worked it out over the weekend. I uh, called her, invited her, told the mayor I invited her to come to the meeting. The money's staying. The committee is going to be what it is. We're not going to have associate members, which was a big concern. Not to have it hearing Roy Martin saying, "Why did he join this meeting? Because we couldn't vote." Mm -hmm. Right.
likes it, okay? Tori, why do you want to hold this back? All right, let's vote on it. There's no reason. My only question was, what so is the hurt? Well, I is the Anything that is in a hurry is illegal. No, it's not really. No more questions. We're taking a vote. Stool makes a motion. No, it's not real, sir. Yes, you can. Well, all right. Okay. This is a personal question about my status yes. in the committee. If I vote yes, will uh, because I haven't applied uh, promptly about uh, staying on the committee, will I be um, off of it? Off it? It depends, right? Well, you didn't receive anything, you're saying, right? I don't remember getting anything. And you said that you called? We, we had a phone conversation, and I, anybody who needed to reapply or to take the ethics test and take an oath, everybody who needed to do that got a letter. And then I had a conversation with you and said that, I, that you could download the application, but I sent you an application. What is this What's that mean? replacing? What's that? I mean, what is, I mean, this is, what, what are these proposed changes replacing? We, we, the, the only, well, the big one is the number of people who can serve, because the mass grant laws say right. nine, and the only other big change is that the city council will recommend somebody, a city councilor, and if that person's no longer a liaison, they're a voting member. Yeah, right, so is the, are these changes replacing what, what is now in our bylaws? Well, we don't have bylaws. We don't have bylaws. bylaws. So what is now ordinance. in the um, ordinance? Ordinance. Right, that's what I, right. so what I just said. Is this only, if, is what is written here only what is doing is replacing the rest of the ordinance remains the same. It's a good question, Michael. Yes, it is. Well,